Good morning, everybody. Walk around from that. Thank you for being here today. I hope you're over the jet lag by now, so you could stick around during the talk. I know I am super excited to be here today. Is it too loud? No? OK. I'm super excited to be here today talking on B-Sides LV. And before we dive into the, into the technical part of this talk, on a personal note, I want to share a story with you that illustrates what I think is my job as a security researcher. That is my motivation. Over 100 years ago, a revolutionary technology, how do we avoid that? A revolutionary technology was invented. That technology allowed people to move in a faster and more personalized way than ever before. That is the car. By the year of 1952, there were over 25 million registered cars on the road. And in that same year, an industrial engineer named John Hetrick was driving to church on Sunday morning with his wife and daughter. Suddenly, a deer ran into the road and John, to, avo to avoid hitting it, turned the wheel of his car and the car went into a ditch. John and his wife instinctively threw their hand to protect their daughter from getting hit. Luckily, none of the family members got hurt, but it did make John realize that that technology lacked a crucial safety feature. And in that same year, he invented the prototype of the airbag, a safety measure we take now for granted. Just as John didn't stop using the car, but instead he pointed out its safety flaws and suggested potential solutions, I believe that my job as a security researcher is to identify security failures in emerging technologies in emerging technologies and suggest potential solutions. And, the, and today, in our talk, we'll present how this mind state, mind state came into our research in GitOp, on GitOps and Argo CD. So without further ado, our agenda for today, this talk will have four parts. First, we will explain why we identified GitOps and Argo CD as an emerging trend, emerging technology, worth re researching. Next, we'll have to study these products. What is GitOps manifesto? How is Argo CD operating? And how does it look like from an attacker's perspective? Next, for our main part of this talk, we'll share with you the research story of how we managed to find a critical vulnerability in the platform of Argo CD and what are its implications if being exploited by an attacker. And lastly, we'll share some security takeaways for you to take home and implement in your organizations drawn from our broader research on GitOps security. Now, you must be curious who am I by this point. My name is Orin. I'm practicing cybersecurity for seven years now. I used to work in Kerberos and networking uh, research. And today, I work as a supply chain security researcher at SciCode. Hey. 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 Hey, I'm Elad. I'm also seven years in cybersecurity field. I'm practicing web application security. That's my main, uh, my main focus. And supply chain security. 
I'm loves hacking random stuff and pretty much everything with an IP. So I'm also a security researcher here at SciCode. So both together with Orin, and that's our team. Thank you. Okay, so let's start. Let's start with identifying a trend. Why we decided to research Argo CD and GitOps. So you know how starting a new research can be like super confusing experience because you have you have all these new technologies you can start and, and research and all these lining lights. It's like you, you, you don't know what to do. But this time we tried to do it differently, the opposite way. We analyzed trends from major Kubernetes and cloud native conferences by the talks that were held in these conferences. And by that, try to identify a trend. And there was that word we weren't familiar with that kept coming again and again. And in a talk from major companies. So we've seen G GitOps at Adobe and GitOps at Spotify. And even how GitOps changed our lives by a person working in VMware. Okay, so these are some serious companies talking about GitOps. But the next question will be, do people actually use it, like regular people, organizations, do they use it? And apparently, 91% of the respondents in a CNCF survey responded that they already use GitOps in their organizations. And just to illustrate visually, how this crazy number looks like. And what's even crazier is that out of the 9% holding back, over two thirds claim that they will embrace GitOps to their organization during the year of 2024. Now it is August. So as for the question, do people use it? Probably yes. And the next thing we'll have to do is find the leading GitOps tool. We have read that GitOps is some kind of way to do continuous deployment for cloud native environments. OK, sounds kind of similar to supply chain security. We could, we could uh, um, try and research that. And out of the same survey, on the top left corner, the most left corner, we can see with over 60% embracement rate, a tool named Argo CD. And when we went to further research, what is that tool in their website? We've seen that small, some small organizations claim that they use Argo. Maybe you know some of them. The last thing we had to do just to, to close this identify trend story as a security researcher, we, we just had to go to Shodan to search for public um, Argo CD applications. And we have found over 12,000 Argo CD applications, which made us wonder how many private ones are there? So GitOps, Argo CD, was it wor worth researching? We believe yes. But let's try and further study what are they exactly. Now let Elad lead. Thank you, Rin. So, like every good research, we started with studying. Studying what is GitOps, what is Argo CD, and basically be the Argo CD gurus. Learn it from bottom up, inside out, learn every feature, and be the best in that to even think that we can exploit that. So for studying, what is even GitOps? GitOps uses Git as a source of truth. Git repository could be GitHub, GitLab, Bitbucket, or any other SEM. It stores there all the configuration files right there, meaning all the deployments, all the IAC files, or everything that we want to deploy to the cloud everything straight into the Git repository. 
So you probably think, why save everything inside Git repository? That leads me to the second point, versioning. So you push new features to the cloud every day, continuously, manually maybe. New services, new ingresses, new load balancers, and one day, everything crash. You're trying to do and think what ma made that messed up and what to re roll back and what to do. But with GitOps, that's not the problem. All you need to do is go one commit backwards and your all infrastructure will be re-rolled and back fixed again. So in the bottom line, the current state inside the, inside the repository that contains all those configuration files will represent the state in the cloud environment. Both of them will be synced. So to visualize this, let's see how it looks like. Firstly, at the left side, we, all, we have all the configuration files to the cloud environment stored in a Git repository. Then we have a GitOps agent, the one that syncs every time and all the time for the Git repository that we configured and checks if there's some new co configuration files to sync to the cloud. Then if there's a new commit, a new deployment, everything, every new uh, uh, configuration file, it will instantly deploy that configuration file to the cloud. Saving that uh, principle of the source of truth is the Git repository. So from an attacker's perspective, it's way simpler. What attacker wants? To sit in production environments, to sit on the cloud environments. Right there is the all sensitive data. So what, we, uh, what attacker needs to do is to break the GitOps agent. And that leads me to the best and most popular Argo CD is the, uh, the most popular GitOps agent is the Argo CD. Argo CD is an implementation of GitOps, meaning it focuses only on Kubernetes. So taking this whole concept of syncing Git repository to some environment in Kubernetes, meaning taking all the deployments, ingresses, services, and sync them to our cluster. You install Argo CD inside your cluster in a separate namespace, and then you're good to go. All your deployments are synced right in your, into your cluster. It has thousands of stars in GitHub, and it's a graduated CNCF project that only made us understand why it's so adopted among the community. So the same slide here, only with the Argo CD. All the configuration files are under one Git repository. Argo CD syncs them all and deploys them to the cluster and makes sure the cluster is up to date with the latest changes. So that will be our focus today, Argo CD. So after understanding a little bit how it looks like and how, the, how Argo CD and GitOps operates, let's see how it really looks like. We set up Argo CD application with a default configuration and started pushing some buttons and created a new application. Like we understood before, new application, first thing first, connect our Git repository, the one with all our configuration files all the deployments. Once hitting OK, we can see everything is starting to be synced. And after the sync is done, we can see the Kubernetes cluster is synced with the latest Git commit. And we have all of our uh, deployments, all of our infrastructure synced right into Argo, by Argo CD. So UI is OK, and it's nice. But we, we really care what's uh, happening behind and under the hood, right? So let's understand what's happening there. We have right there a git commit with the first commit, and the Kubernetes cluster are synced into the same commit. Then a user comes one day and submits a new commit 
can uh, contain any configuration file, any Kubernetes configuration file. A repository service, a new component along the way, being notified about the git commit, and makes sure to update a Redis cache server. Then, a Kubernetes controller takes those changes from the Redis cache server and updates the cluster. So at the end of that process, we can see that the uh, state of our Git repository is synced to our Kubernetes cluster. So after understanding all of those, what is GitOps, what is Argo CD, why it's so popular, let's move on to the exploitation phase. A huge component that we saw before is the Redis cache server the one that holds all our deployments and is staying up to date with the latest changes. Going back, going to the documentation and to the learning phase, we're trying to investigate a little bit about that specific Redis cache instance. We are going to the documentation and we see something we really, really like. The next sentence. Secrets are available to anyone who has access to the Redis instance. That's nice. We love secrets, and we love unauthenticated access. So together is magic. We tunneled our way and tried to connect to the Redis instance, and it succeeded. It's nice. We are putting inside the secrets part and trying to hit some buttons under the Redis instance. See what it contains, what data we can find, and we see very particular manifest key. Going to that key, we see that all the deployments from the Git repository, everything, all the secrets, all the deployments, all the ingresses, basically all the configuration files from the Git repository are right in there. That made us think, as a security researcher, how we can interfere in that full flow from Git repository to Kubernetes cluster. Can we maybe inject some deployment straight into the Redis cache server? Will it be succeed? So that's our main main thought here. So poison the Redis cache server. We are building a malicious deployment that will be privileged with all access to the node host of the Kubernetes cluster, that will, be, uh, with, that will be with the access to the file system, to the network adapters, everything. And what it will do is only create a reverse shell to a ser to attacker server, meaning we accept, expect here to get a connection to our server with the privileged permissions. We poison the Redis cache server, and we wait. We wait a couple of minutes, and it failed. We didn't get any connection. It's very sad. Maybe we'll start another research idea. Maybe move to another, another platform. I don't know. A couple of minutes of researching that, and we find out why our changes and why we didn't get any connection. So our changes were re-rolled, and nothing has been changed in the Redis instance. So we are going back to that DB, and then we see that nothing changed, nothing at all, and the Redis cache server has been synced again with the repository, with, in that case, a Gita repository. Few minutes go by, and we understand. We, as an attacker, inside a cluster in another namespace, try to deploy a malicious deployment by injecting a configuration straight into the Redis instance. That's okay. Suddenly, the repository service got notified about that, about the change. And what it do is Resync everything from the Git repository to the Redis instance. 
So everything is back to normal state, and we didn't manage to inject our malicious deployment. So what now? Are we leaving that? What will we do? Will we try to use the regular flow from the Git repository? Orin will explain what happens next. Thank you a lot. You're passing me the mic in a complicated stage of this talk. But what we did try to do is to go back to the application manifest and see if we missed something. And this time, we've noticed an entry called cache entry hash. And that entry possessed some kind of a string looked like a base64. So we were thinking, could it be some kind of a validation mechanism, like a checksum for the application manifest content? Luckily, Argo CD is an open source application. So we could go to the source code and look for the function generating that cache entry hash. And in the source code, We've found a function called generate cache entry hash. That function receives a structure of the application manifest and returns the string of the new cache entry hash. Perfect. If they went through all the trouble for creating a validation mechanism for the content, probably it's gonna, it's gonna use some kind of private signing mechanism, right? With a private secret. This is what we thought. But then we found that comment inside the source code. And I will read it. They say, hash the JSON representation into a base64 encoded FNV. That was written inside the generate cache entry function. I'll get this part. We don't need a cryptographic hash algorithm since this is only for detecting data corruption. I swear to God, I haven't changed anything. So we were super happy because that means that we could recalculate manually the cache entry hash in order to sign our own malicious deployment, right? So this is what we've done. So our second try to inject malicious deployment We'll inject a Kubernetes deployment containing a pod with all the capabilities granted, meaning privileged pod, and its whole purpose in life would be to spawn a bash shell to our attacker server. But this time, we signed our own application manifest using the logic from the source code. We waited for the changes to take place. And this time, it worked. We managed to succeed. And in our attacker server, we could see a new connection from within the client's cluster, granting us privilege access to the cluster. And from here, the sky's the limit. It's like every attacker's dream come true. When we went back to the Argo CD application, we've seen a new record was added. And when we took a closer look, we could see that a new resource was created named that attacker. Spoiler, this is our malicious deployment. And theoretically, if you're being worried about um, getting detected, we could inject our malicious deployment perform the attack, and then delete everything so we won't remain any trace and we won't get detected. Now, how does it look like from an attacker's perspective? What could a, have attacker done with that privilege access? So first, it could access the file system of all the pods within the cluster, all the production pods, they could steal their data, which means that we could also steal their tokens 
their Kubernetes tokens to perform actions with their privileges on their behalf. Also, an attacker could steal all the Kubernetes secrets in the cluster because he is able to deploy whichever resource he desires. Thus, he can mount the secrets. Next, you're probably familiar with this uh, application. It's Wireshark. And the sniff you're seeing is a sniff from a production pod being taken from our malicious injected pod. Because since we've granted network capabilities to our malicious pod, he could sniff on the network adapter of the host node and read all the production communication. And also, it could intercept and perform many in the middle attacks to the, to the pods in the production environment. And if you're not Kubernetes fans, don't worry, we have something for you as well. We could use those privileges to steal the IAM role of the host node. And from here starts our journey of lateral movement inside the client's cloud environment. So that attack vector, that vulnerability, really allows attacker to have it all. To sum it up, the attacker's new capabilities would be he could steal all the secrets in the Kubernetes cluster. He could sniff all the network communication and intercept it. It could deploy whichever Kubernetes resource it desires in the cluster and escape to the cloud environment. Now imagine that any pod in the cluster could perform this attack. Any pod, any compromised pod in the production environment could access the ready server and take complete control over the cluster. We have disclosed that vulnerability to the Argo CD team, and it got a critical score of 9.1. We were super happy. It's like it was the, the highest score we ever got, so we were very content. <laughs> and to recap the exploit part, we have learned that any compromised pod in the cluster could access the Redis instance of the Argo CD application, which resides within the Argo CD namespace. It could retrieve the application manifest of the Argo CD, steal the secrets if they exist in there, and inject whichever malicious Kubernetes resource it desires, effectively leading to cluster compromise. OK, that part was intense. <laughs> um, as for the disclosure, here it's important to me to give a shout out for the Argo CD um, development team to Michael, Leonardo, and Pavel for helping us to mitigate this vulnerability and make Argo CD safer for everyone. As for security takeaways, I have four things for you today. The first one is pretty straightforward. Update the version of your Argo application. That's easy. That's an easy one. To a version which is not vulnerable, vulnerable to that attack. The next three are going to be general GitOp security takeaways drawn from our broader research on GitOp security. And these are as following. First, deploy your GitOps tool in a separate cluster. Since if the client or someone have deployed the Argo CD in a separate cluster, a compromised pod in the production environment couldn't have accessed the ready server. The same logic goes for the second uh, takeaway. The enforced network policies 
Network policies in Kubernetes are like firewall or IP tables. And by enforcing an allowed list that allows access to the GitOps resources only to resources that should access them in the first place, you could have mitigated that vulnerability easily. And it's important to make sure you also have a CNI plugin to enforce those network policy rules. And the, the last one is the golden rule. It's a principle for cloud um, environments in general, or any environments, actually. Deploy GitOps tool in the least privileged, um, with the least privileges possible. Instead of deploying it with the default admin permissions, it's better to customize it to your privileges that um, you actually need in your organization. Now, let's watch a live demo that was recorded before. Here, we can see our attacker server. We're listening on port 50852. This is like a normal EC2 machine. And we'll wait for connection from within the client's cluster. And this is the compromised pod. It could have been compromised by a web shell or whatever. It is a pod in the production environment. And it has low um, permissions in the cluster. It is not supposed to be able to container escape, neither to privilege esca escalate inside the cluster. And next, we will see the Argo CD application. And this is the same um, structure as we've seen in the presentation. And right there, on the right, you could see this pod. This is where we are. Again, it's a production pod that has been compromised with some low privileges in the cluster. Perfect. Now let's try and exploit that. We have uh, written a tool to, um, to exploit that vulnerability. And it has two modes. It has the detect mode, which will allow us to detect the Argo CD ready server and the server. And it has an exploit mode. For detect mode, it will try to resolve the FQDN of the Argo CD ready server against the Kubernetes DNS server inside the cluster. That way, you could know the IP address. And we could see that the Argo CD application's uh, version, sorry, the Argo CD version is prone to that attack. It's a public API, the version. Next for the exploit. The exploit will require two flags. First one will be the malicious deployment to inject. It's a Kubernetes YAML um, infrastructure we will want to inject. And we used um, malicious deployment taken from bad pods, public project written by Bishop Fox. So thank you very much for that. And it contains a pod with all the privileges that will connect to our attacker server. And we'll also give it the Redis IP address. When we hit Enter, we can see that it found one application manifest. It injected a malicious deployment and recalculated the cache entry hash. And the attack completed successfully. And when we go to the Argo CD application, web view, we can see that a new pod was created, that attacker. That is our malicious pod. And now, when watching our attacker server, you wouldn't be surprised that we have received a new connection from within the client's cluster that allows us everything on the cluster to compromise the cluster as a whole. And that is with, without any privileges in the cluster. I'm happy it worked that time. The recorded demo was a good idea. Um, that's it for today. If you're interested 
in more technical details about the research or some um, more detailed remediation guidelines for that vulnerability, please read our blog post on the, on the vulnerability. And on a personal note, I had a great time, thank you. And we're very enthusiastic for supply chain security, so if you want to collaborate, or you have any ideas or questions, please feel free to DM us on LinkedIn and we'll be more than happy to answer. And if you have any questions, um, now it could be a good time. We have time, right? Well, perfect. Thank you. If anyone has any questions, just raise your hand and I'll walk around with the mic so everyone can hear. We'll also stay after the talk if it's like a stressful um, position. position. All right. Thank you very much. Have a, enjoy the rest of your day. <laughs>